But, uh, but you, I think our next guest is a big Bills wow, fan. Wow, you know what? I did not realize this. As a lifelong Dolphins fan, I've always liked Brian Hodgson, and uh, I guess I'll have to look past oh, the fact he's got no. two pieces of Bills memorabilia in the background. Oh, I, that was poor timing by me. That was almost like that was intentional. <laughs> yes. How are you, Coach? I'm good, fellas. I'm good. I, I'm not sure how I feel about this uh, this digs trade this morning, but uh, – Outside of that, things are good. So, gr- growing up in New York, before we get into basketball, did you um, do you remember the Super Bowls? I know you were like three, four, five years old. Um, I don't know when you started watching sports, but we actually had another a more- unintentional shot. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that's a- I, I mean, guys, this is this is not what I was told I was going to be talking about. <laughs> I mean, bring up the but we did have a random Marv Levy reference yesterday. We were interviewing. Uh, it was Hugh, Hugh Freeze, Freeze because he lost four straight uh, high school football championship yep. games. We said that's the Marv Levy of football. So of anyway, do you yeah. do you remember those Super Bowls at all? I do, I do, and Marv Marv Levy's still a, a legend in my eyes, and. Um, you know, I'm I'm a diehard Bills fan. I, I hope we can get back there soon. I think we've got the quarterback to do it. I, I'm not I'm not thrilled about losing Diggs, but um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can overcome this uh, issue with the Chiefs here sometime in the near future. All right, so let's talk about what you came on here to talk about, and that is uh, college basketball. Of course, of course, Coach Hodgson was with Nate Oates uh, for a very long time, helped build this Alabama team. So we wanted to pick his brain on this national championship game. I would just start, we had Petway on Monday, and I'll kind of start by asking you the same question. When you first hooked up with Nate Oates back in those Buffalo days, did you look at him and say, that's a guy one day I think can lead a team to a Final Four? Yeah, truthfully, I did. Um, I didn't know it when he hired me, but it didn't take uh, more than, you know, about 48, 72 hours on the job with him. Um, I don't know anybody that works harder, uh, pays more attention to detail, uh, and is more driven than Nate Oates. Um, his, you know, this is, I was talking to somebody the other day and they were talking about, well, man, he's finally got that final four. Um, you know, he can relax a little bit that, that if, if that's the mentality, you don't know Nate very well. Cause, um, he, he's just going to take this thing one step further. So, um, I'm, I'm thrilled, uh, and excited for him and the program, uh, for them to get there. Uh, I think this is one of the best coaching jobs he's done, uh, since he's been at Alabama, um, with what they lost, obviously, last year, uh, the entire staff changeover, uh, first-round exit in the SEC tournament, uh, and then to get this group refocused and into the Final Four is an unbelievable accomplishment. So, Reese Davis was on just about an hour ago, and he was talking about Mark Sears and the year he's having, and his banner should be hung in Coleman, and I think we all agree. Uh, you were very, very active in the recruitment of him, and a guy coming from the MAC, when you first saw Mark Sears, did you believe he could turn into this type of player? Uh, I'd be lying if I said yes. I knew Mark was a really, really good player. Um, but, I mean, we're talking about a guy now that holds the single-season scoring record at the University of Alabama. I would have never, uh, never imagined that. Mark can flat-out score the basketball, and he's a worker. Uh, so as I got to coach him, uh, you know, some of those things started to, uh, you know, started to open my eyes a little bit more. Um, you know, he, he obviously scored it really well last year on a, on a really talented team. And then this year kind of put them on their back. And uh, but no, coming out of the Mac, you know, it's it's hard to anticipate uh, really what's going to translate, you know. And I thought one of the best comparisons I've heard uh, lately is, is Jalen Brunson. Uh, I mean, um, you know, he's doing Jalen Brunson type stuff right now. Um, and, and obviously Jalen Brunson's been uh, very successful. So I, I couldn't be more proud of what Mark's done this year. Uh, and he's etched his name in history, and that's that's something that's I mean that's that's going to be a tough record to break uh, as far as points scored in a single season. I mean he's had some huge games. I feel like you know even some games where they've struggled. I look up and and Mark's you know closing in on thirty points. Uh, I'm interested before we continue to talk about Alabama. Uh, when I saw you in Nashville, we were up there to support Coach. Um, you and Jordan and and the new little baby. How how's fatherhood going so far? Are you you sleeping any at all? Uh, yeah, it's been good. Um, Jordan, Jordan's been a, a saint. She takes care of uh, most of the nightly duties, but um, you know he's he's. I'm gonna have to get a hold of the Alabama football staff probably because he's uh, you know he he's on his way. Um, you know he's like 17 pounds already at uh, 10 weeks old. <laughs> 10 weeks and so, 17 pounds. Yeah, all he does is eat. Um, but it's it's been a blessing. It's been uh, best thing I've ever experienced. Um, and and um, 
you know, he's he's traveled all over. He got to go to the SEC tournament, came to the Sun Belt tournament. Um, so he's taken in quite a bit of basketball already. Just, just as a heads up, Alabama's changed football coaches since you were there. So uh, <laughs> if, if you're going to contact yeah. him, you're going to need a new number. Yeah, yeah. I think I, there's there's still some familiar faces over in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, you probably should get Puritan to work in your contract, a little uh, uh, a little incentive there so you can feed the baby there. Keep that stuff, uh, keep that cupboard full there with Puritan, right? Yeah, I'm gonna call Freddie Roach. I see he got a you know a title change and a raise. And, and I, think, I, think, uh, I think my my boy might have a chance to play for Freddie. So I'll see if he'll we can start an NIL deal right now. Um, hey, we, 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 I go ahead, Donovan. No, you go ahead. I was just gonna say we were talking about Donovan Klingon and, and Reese Davis also brought up a stat that Illinois was 0 and 19 from the floor when he contested shots. Uh, this Alabama team obviously loves to attack from the outside in, but what is the best way to maybe get this guy in foul trouble? You know, I that so the great thing uh, about Coach is, um, and it's the biggest misconception about his offense. Uh, obviously, he's uh, he's the best offensive mind in college basketball, and um, you know you could argue. I mean, Danny Hurley's right there with him. Uh, obviously, at UConn, they're phenomenal. Uh, Greg McDermott at Creighton. Uh, but coach is, is, you know, there's this misconception that his game plan's the same from, from game to game and they're going to jack up threes. And, and you no, know, he, he puts so much time into each individual game uh, and, and changes things, um, you know, based on stats like that. Uh, and so my guess, you know, the, the, the thing that Alabama has that a lot of teams don't is they can space the floor with Grant Nelson. They can space the floor, um, you know, with Jaron Stevenson. And so really, if you can get Klingon to step away from the rim uh, and have to guard one of those guys on the perimeter, um, you know, it'd be to your advantage. Uh, Take the rim protection away. Now, obviously, you're going to give a little bit up on the defensive end if you're doing that uh, because, you know, it – UConn's a hard team to send a double team. They've got four shooters around one of the best post players in the country. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what coach does. Um, but I know he'll he'll have a great game plan. And uh, I have zero doubt that they're going to score the basketball on Saturday. I'm interested when you look at Alabama and what they've done in these four games in the NCAA tournament, how they're different from when you scouted them when Arkansas State played them, when you saw them in Nashville, the one and done, and now the success they're having in the tournament. What changed from those three viewing opportunities from you? Yeah, so uh, I thought when we when we played them, um, you know, extremely obviously talents there. They can they can score with anybody. I felt like they didn't have an identity yet. Um, you know, they, with all the new faces, I think guys were still trying to adjust to roles. Um, you know, you've got a backcourt and Mark Sears and Aaron Estrada and Latrell Wright. So everybody's trying to kind of see still where they fit in. Um, and to to Coach Oates' credit, a lot of other teams at the Power Five level, they they make those adjustments by playing low major division one by games. And so they can sort things out a little easier. Coach doesn't do that. I mean, he every year, non-conference strength of schedule is one of the top in the country. So it's a little harder to sort those things out early uh, when you're playing, you know, Creighton and Arizona and Clemson and uh, the list goes on. And so I think it took them a little bit longer to find uh, their their identity. Uh, and again, that in the SEC tournament, I thought that they, with some of the injuries and, and bumps in the road that they took, they lost it for a little bit. You know, I felt like that first round game uh, in Nashville – um, you know, they never really dictated the way that they wanted the game to be played. Um, and, you know, coach and I talked about it after the game. And, you know, I obviously I knew I had the utmost confidence that they were going to be motivated and ready to go by the time the NCAA tournament hit. And you never want to lose in the SEC tournament. I'm, uh, but I would say there's a silver lining in, in, in the sense that it refocused the group. Um, and, and so I think. You know, if you've watched them play the last several games in the NCAA tournament, you see a team with an identity. You see teams. Uh, you see a team with, uh, you know, every, every guy's role uh, has really been defined. Uh, and I thought I think top to bottom, their roster's done a phenomenal job in their role. Um, you know, you look at Rylan Griffin nailing four threes the other day. I mean, that's huge. Um, you know, take some pressure off Mark Sears. Nick Pringle, obviously up and down this year, has been phenomenal in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you go back to the non-con, even when we played him, Muhammad Diabate didn't have an identity or a role. Uh, now he's an integral part of what they're doing. 
Um, he's he's been phenomenal here down the stretch, and uh, so I, I think they're playing their best basketball. Which as a coach, you want to play your best basketball in March and April. Arkansas State head coach Brian Hodgson with us for a few more moments. Uh, we've we've talked about the extensive history with the Hurley family that Coach Oates had. How how much will familiarity between those two play in, into this? Do you think? Do you do you think it's one of those where he knows how Dan Hurley's thinking every time, and Dan Hurley knows how Nate Oates is thinking every time? I don't think anybody uh, in America knows how either one of those guys are thinking. <laughs> unless, That's a great point. Unless they, unless they hooked them up to some sort of machine, those two dudes are wired. Um, and and you know, I've I've had the. Uh, pleasure of being around Danny quite a quite a bit as well, and obviously what he's doing is phenomenal. Um, they've got a, a unbelievable friendship, um, but they're also two of the most competitive dudes in this industry. Um, so my guess is there's not much communication between those two this week, even though they've probably been talking on a um, you know on a weekly basis up until now. Um, but you are you're going to see a competitive battle uh, by two by two close friends, and uh, it's it's going to make for one heck of a basketball game. I know you're still a big piece, uh, a, a part of this team. If Alabama pulls the upset on Saturday, what is the cocktail of choice for you? I'm a bourbon guy. Um, I'm nice a bourbon answer. Guy. Yeah, what's that? It's a nice answer. We're doing a little bourbon podcast after the show today. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm a big. I, I've got some here. I've got some gifts that we've gotten throughout the course of the season. Ooh. You know, I've, I keep on the desk. Uh, this is the Masters Collection Woodford. Um, you know, my 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 drink of choice, my favorite bottle. I don't know if you can see it uh, up top on uh, underneath that Bill's hard hat. I've got a bottle of Angel's Envy. Uh, that we got this year from uh, the distillery right after we beat uh, Louisville with with the score on, engraved on the bottle. Oh, wow. um, so I, I may even, you know, I may have to bust that open if, if uh, Alabama wins this game, we get to the championship. Nice choice. Yeah, nice choice. I like it. Uh, well, Coach, I know uh, you guys were making a run in the conference tournament there. Didn't end the way you wanted to, but it felt like a good positive step uh, at the end of the season for you there at Arkansas State. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, with the effort from from this group. I'm very fortunate um, to be here and to have the group that I did. Um, you know, we we battled injuries all year. I had uh, three scholarship guys out for the entire season on medical redshirt. Um, you know, we 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 lost guys uh, throughout the year. We had one of our starters only play ten Sun Belt games. Uh, but again, like I like I mentioned earlier about this Alabama team, I thought we played our best basketball in February and March. Um, and, and that, that says a lot about this group. They came together. Um, we started to have an identity, uh, obviously, you know, you, when you fall one game short of making the NCAA tournament in, in your first year, it's painful. Um, but we went on and played in the CBI. Uh, we won, you know, won two games there, uh, first postseason victory for Arkansas state in 33 years, uh, and first, um, only the fourth time in school history, uh, to win 20 division one games, mm. um, so, Super, super thrilled uh, and honored to, to, to be here. Jeff Purinton for giving me this opportunity uh, and really excited about our future. Well, keep it up. I know uh, you're very well thought of in Tuscaloosa, so uh, I, hope, uh, I hope you continue to be very well thought of in Jonesboro as well, Coach. We appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks, fellas. Enjoy. All right, Thank good you, talking with you. That is Coach Brian Hodgson, the uh, former assistant for Nate Oates there at Buffalo and in uh, Tuscaloosa and also now the head coach at Arkansas State. And- 